So the last video uh, we have arranged all these keys uh, nice in order by just basically moving them around changing their X and Y properties and that's just basically done by uh, you know, trying the different values and uh, see where they look right so let's add the functionality to them so now what we want to do is call this object the play sound function and you can do that by doing the uh, following syntax you can do object dot key add event listener and you want to tell it what kind of event you want to look for in this case we want to look for the touch event so when a touch occurs on that image and you have to specify a function name that you're going to create that's going to be called when that happens so I'm just going to call it touch listener uh, you can call it anything you want I'm going to do the same thing to the black keys and now we're going to have to create this touch listener function so I'm going to do that up here I'm going to go function touch listener end and when this when this event listener calls this touch listener it passes in an argument which is an event it's called an event and I'm just gonna call it E for short and what you can do with this is you can go like this uh, you can go like E the face begin that means when the touch started, when they touched it. You can have a moved face when they move their fingers around or an ended face when they lift up their fingers. And so we're going to do this on when they touch it. And on that, we're going to call this function, this uh, played out sound function. And now a touch happens on these when you touch these and it makes a sound. But there's a problem when you hit the black keys, both the white key sound and the black key sound sounds because we put a event listener on this white image and even though this this black key is over it, it's still going to capture the touch. So to solve the problem I have this, I call this a white uh, key touch area. You can't really see much because it's just a white uh, rectangle is basically just a half of this size rectangle right here and I'm gonna remove the touch handling from this key and just gonna transfer it over here and I'll still leave it on the black key but since they will not overlap each other there won't be any conflict so for each white key I'm gonna have to add another image which I'm gonna go like this Oops. which is just another image with this name with this area touchpad and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set its alpha property to 1% if you put it at 1 it will be 100% that will be fully visible at 0 it will be fully invisible so 0 0.01 it will be like 1% visible which is like completely non-visible but it still be there and it will still capture the uh, touch so I'm gonna instead of adding to the key the event listener I'm gonna add it to the touch area so the key itself is no longer gonna capture the touch and we're also gonna have to position these so basically the uh, touch area uh, for its x and y coordinate the x is just gonna be the same as the key because it's gonna go straight over and the y I calculated it to be 285 which will put it down here below the area of the black keys and so there won't be any conflict so now when you play it this white key when you click it here it doesn't make any sound when you go lower now it makes a sound and since it's not in conflict with this one 
now you can hit both at the same time okay so the last thing we need to do is add the covers uh, the uh, blue covers and it's just the matter of adding another image and there's gonna be two different images I just add that image to that one and I add another one for the black key and the X and Y coordinates are just gonna be the exact same thing as the keys itself because the covers are the same size so their X and Y coordinate is just the same as the key itself so there's nothing there's nothing more to it and when you do that uh, they all appear so that's that's not what we want right away so what I'm gonna do is right after I created it I'm gonna have the is visible property false that means it will not be visible right away and that means they disappear but now we have to somehow make them appear so right here at the play sound after the play sound we're gonna make them visible so this equals true so now when you click on it it'll be blue but they stay blue so what I'm gonna do is in the in this function right here I'm gonna create another function function hide key cover and and what I'm gonna do is make it false and we're gonna have to call this function uh, somehow so I'm gonna call timer dot perform with delay and in here you want to tell how many milliseconds you want to wait like this will be one second uh, milliseconds about oh, that's too much I'm just gonna wait 250 let's just do a thousand for now and you want to tell which function you want to call so it'll be a hide cover function so what it'll do is play the sound make it visible and it's just a declaration and it calls this with a delay of one second and it'll hide this so let's see that and it'll hide the key I don't know how well my screen capture it, it, that it turns blue uh, how well it captures it it's actually I set the value only to 250 because it's just more quicker that way so now you can play the piano and there you go that's how you create a piano for your iPhone and thanks for watching